The deepest memory I have, I can recall being about six years old. One day we was watching TV and this woman comes out of the wall and floated across the room. You know, as a kid sitting on a couch and we all just looked at each other like, you know. Many years later, some friends of mine said they just got back from going spooking at this old house in Greencastle, Indiana. And this one guy told me something came out of the wall at him that frightened him so bad. And I was so intrigued. I went and grabbed all my cameras and I said, let's go. We went to the house way out on a country road in the middle of nowhere. There's no glass in this old house. It had never even been wired for electricity or plumbing, ever. It was three bricks thick walls. It was built in about 1834. There was this really creepy tree hedge around it, and a lightning storm started moving in. God, it almost sounds like a monster movie. The flashes were so brilliant, they were like welder's arcs. I remember walking up to the house, and I knew I could get away with going upstairs. The other guys wouldn't go upstairs. It got too creepy for them. Whoa, it's a bird. And when I got up there, I shot a few pictures of the bedroom. There was nothing on the walls, not a single thing on the walls. When I walked back through to get out of there, the camera panned around the room again, and there's all this writing appeared on the wall in a matter of seconds. While we were in the house, I felt something. You hear that? Heartbeat? It was undescribable. I never felt it before in my life. And I hear a heartbeat. Bum, 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 bum. You hear it? It's as if the presence of a woman, a big woman, come up and just wrap her arms around you. And this thing hugged me. Then all of a sudden, I felt it just melt into me. I can never describe what being possessed would feel like. Until that moment, I knew then that whatever it was had me. I felt my heartbeat. I put my hand down. I had the camcorder going, and I felt my, and it wasn't my heartbeat. This thing was a different time and tremendous strength. And I panicked, and I ran out of the house. My friends were looking at me like, you know, they were afraid. And they said there was this pink, looked like a pink flashlight glowing out of my head. And we all got out of there, and right as we walk away, Terry had shot one last picture, and that's where the gold ghost in the bay window. The next day, I got the pictures out, and when I opened them up, I looked at what we had, and I was like, oh my God. Three poses in an upstairs window, another one at the back door, a golden picture in the bay window, a flyby on video camera and night vision. And we caught it on film. Flew right by me. I mean, came up and literally just, I felt it when it touched me and I turned and looked. I was like, what was that? You know, I never, it was an electromagnetic presence. Big sack of electricity. It snapped and popped when it went by. It had no weight. Felt it. My next question was, who is this? His name was Jim. I knew that he... And all new The Glaze, tomorrow at 10 on a &E. My next question was, who is this? This picture here is mother's mother and father here. Grandma and grandpa. I'd shown a little local TV studio what I had, and they thought, wow, this is fantastic. So they done a little segment on it, asking who this is, and some people came forward. Mary O'Hare and William O'Hare. And they built a house. Yes, my granddad did. Basically, it led to Mary Riddell. 
She's the one that identified the ghost for me. She said, I know who that is. That's my mom, and that was my mom's house, and that's my mom's bedroom window. And she brought this box out of all these photographs of her mother and the whole family that lived there. This photograph shows Irene and her sister and another sister sitting on each side of her and their boyfriend standing in the background. She said, there's my mom when she was a teenager living in that house. And right next to her was her sister, Vera. And I said, well, that looks like the ghost in the back door. And sure enough, it was. The gold ghost in the front window, though, that still vexes me. The first head that flew by, I'd still framed it. And as it went by me, it looked me over. It looked right back and went by and looked back at me and made a face. And I looked at this photograph of the family pictures, and there's the brother standing in the middle, and he has his haircut. The second flyby, it looks like a woman, and she actually flew up to me and touched my camera and flew off at a different direction. And if that's true, and we die and turn into energy and can fly around, that's gonna be a fabulous ride. Recently, I was driving up the road and I looked back and I didn't see the house. And I just was like, oh my God, you know, what happened? The owner of the property had torn the house down. It was just a devastating feeling. It made me think about all of the attention this story had gotten, and it was the attention that caused her house to be torn down. How terrible of them to bring a backhoe up there and push this house down just because it was on TV and they don't want people up there studying this phenomenon. And it was so upsetting. I got photographs of me sitting on the pile of rubble and feeling so bad, you know, and there's an orb right there beside me, as if she feels that too. Well, what's sad about this is when I first discovered the ghost, I had been through a bad divorce and, and a hard time, you know, and I was pretty much, no, you know, homeless. And there she had this beautiful monster house, you know, and now it's reversed. Now, I have a nice home and she's homeless. She saved me. She pointed me in, in the right path. This ghost loved me. These photographs have showed me there's something more to this world than us. Something way more. I thank this spirit for its appearance because it changed the way that I believe completely.